the document camera and we will start um, getting it. I don't know, let's get this light on. Chapter 22. Okay. Fatty acid metabolism. Fatty acid metabolism. So, as I mentioned earlier, metabolism that involves the anabolism and catabolism, that is the fatty acid synthesis. As well as we are going to see the fatty acid breakdown. Okay. What is fatty acid? As I mentioned earlier, fatty acids are they are long hydrocarbon chain. Hydrocarbon chain. Okay. What is a uh, hydrocarbon? Hydro means again hydrogen and carbon is uh, uh, C, symbol. And also you have an acid. In organic acid you will get COOH and then CH, CH, CH. Like that you have <coughs> CH3. So there are several of the CH2 group or methylene group is attached to it. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2. You may have a 18 to 22, like 17, you know, or 16. These are the carbon, you know, number. And the hydrogen is there, and then the acid group is there. So it is a fatty acid. So the, we call it a long chain, long hydrocarbon chain. That is uh, basically a fatty acid. Okay. If you want to uh, get into the role, of this fatty acid in physiology, the role, physiological role in physiology. Um, there are several ways that we can do the fatty acids are fatty acids are the fuel molecules. Fuel molecules. They are fuel molecules, okay? The fuel means already you have to, you know, remember that they should be stored in our body. They stored as, uh, that means fatty acids are stored as triglyceride, T-R-I, triglyceride, glycerides, okay. And they are uncharged, the triglycerides are uncharged, you know, positive and minus, uncharged uncharged esters, esters of fatty acids, of fatty acids, with glycerol, okay, with glycerol, that's all. So I want to just summarize how these fatty acids are being stored. As I mentioned, they are the long chain hydrocarbons. At the same time, they are esterified with the glycerol. Glycerol, we'll see what is a glycerol molecule looks like. So if I write a, a structure of glycerol, it's going like this, CH2OH and CHOH, and here the CH2, and then I can go OH like this. Okay, CH2OH, CH, CHOH, and CH2OH. This is called glycerol. Okay, now, I said the long chain fatty acids and they have OH, C, OH, and then CH2, I put it like that, and then 15 times, and then you have a CH3, and then you have another fatty acid, CH2, and this is uh, 17 times, for example, and then CH3, and then uh, here the acid group, and then CH2 probably again 16 times on CH3. So how many fatty acids are now here? 
three fatty acids. This is one, two, three fatty acids, and one glycerol molecule. Okay, and what happened? The alcohol and organic acid. We call it as ester. Okay, E S T E R ester. So what happened? There's a condensation of the reaction where the water molecules will be removed from here, and then water molecules will be removed from here. H2O will be removed. That means three H2O molecule, water molecule is removed, and what will happen? There is a, a linkage of a bond, and this is called the ester linkage. So in other words, you also get what uh, a triglyceride means. Triglyceride means I can write like this and then in a short form like this. So if I write like this, this is the CH3, CH3 group, CH3 group, and this is the glycerol moiety, and this is the, this is called the, again, a fatty acid group. <coughs> so this is called a yeah, triglyceride, triglyceride. In other words, I also call the triacyl group, this group we call it acyl group, you know, the fatty acid, acyl group. They also call the Try acyl okay. glycerol. In other words, we also call it as a tag, T A G, tri acyl glycerol. So we will be using this terminology quite often, so please remember to follow whatever we are going to discuss in this class about this. So this is, I am summarizing it how the fatty acids are existing in nature, and we are going to study about the synthesis of these fatty acids as well as the synthesis of the triglyceride and how this molecule is synthesized and the degrade and resynthesize when all these, uh, you know, on, on this particular chapter. And then fatty acid metabolism as well. So where these uh, molecules are being stored, okay, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to study there are the four roles uh, of these molecules are the fatty acids. Um, they they play a four four types of physiological role. One uh, is, as I mentioned earlier, fuel molecules. Fuel molecules as triglycerides. Tag triacylglycerol. Where these molecules are stored, they are stored in adipose cells. Adipose cells. They store this one. Okay. And Whenever you walk, during walking or exercising, exercising, you are using the predominantly fatty acids as a fuel. So if you want to do some workout, you are working with the fatty acids as a fuel molecule for your workout. So that's what is a fuel molecule. Okay. Now we'll go on to the two. Uh, another physiological role is to fatty acids are the building blocks of phospholipids. They are the building blocks for phospholipids. Phospholipids. And these phospholipids are the component of membranes. Okay. Phospholipids and glycolipids. Glycolipids. And these phospholipids and glycolipids are the components of biological membrane component. Membrane component. They are membrane components. Okay. This is number two. Now, number three is the proteins are covalently bound with fatty acids. Okay. Now, number three. Protein. They also covalently, covalently bound, okay, covalently bound with fatty acids. And the proteins bound with fatty acid, then they will mobilize. Actually, the fatty acids are moved by the proteins, okay, just like a boat, right? They move to the membrane location, membrane location. So another uh, property or physiological role is protein, they bound with protein, fatty acids bound with protein and then they can move around inside the cells, 
or the body or, or any other organ to organ. Okay. And then they also serve as actually the fatty acids as uh, uh, also a type of fatty acid. They serve or the fatty acid serves as hormones. Just like hormones. It's not like a hormone. It is not hormone. Fatty acids are not hormone, but they act like hormones. Okay. Serve as hormones. And they also serve as intracellular signal messenger or intracellular messenger molecule. Intra that means intra means inside the cell. Say so outside the cell they call it intercellular. Intracellular means the reaction which is taking place inside the cell. Okay. Intracellular signal. That means the fatty acids act just like hormones and act as a messenger, intracellular signal messenger. M E S S E N G R messenger molecule. Okay. Now, I said mentioned earlier the fatty acid metabolism means synthesis as well as degradation. Okay. So the fatty acid synthesis synthesis and degradation. Both of them, the reaction for synthesis and the reaction for the degradation are just like the mirror image, meaning the, the reactions, there are four types of reactions and, and that reactions uh, which will, will, will go forward uh, to degrade as well as also synthesis, it follows the same mirror image of the, each other. It's not the same reaction but the different steps, mirror image of each other, okay, in a, uh, of what, other chemical reaction, chemical reaction, something like you have a free wave which is going into the one direction here and it's coming at the other way and there are four stops like that. So the same way it will go through but there are different reactions which is taking place here, here, when backward and forward you have another reaction, so that's all. But they are identical steps are in there. So we'll see that one in figure 22.2 in your textbook. So we will see that synthesis and degradation, but one for four steps are involved, as I mentioned, four steps. So first we will see the degradation, the degradation process. The degradation process is an oxidative process. First one is oxidative oxidative process, okay? And how they are oxidative process, the first step is the, the fatty acids, fatty acids, the FA means fatty acids, they have to activate it. They should be activated, or they call the activated acetyl group, okay? So the oxidative process, at the end of the oxidative process, all the fatty acids, okay, all the, the hydrocarbons of the fatty acids, they are degraded into what? Degraded into, into activated, activated acetyl unit, acetyl, acetyl units. So the activated acetyl units then enter in the mitochondria and then it will produce more of energy. But here what you have fatty acids, the long chain fatty acids, and that is be broken down into acetyl unit. Acetyl group, at least you have a two carbon units, just a CH3, CO, and then the coenzyme A. This is acetylated, acetyl group. So you have started with C18, that means 18 carbon unit. But 18 carbon unit broken down to how many here? Nine two carbon unit of acetyl group. That means the fatty acid degradation nine times. Each time it degraded, it will have one CH3CO group or acetyl group. So on the nine rounds, you, what you get ultimately nine different, uh, I mean, acetyl CoA molecule from C18 as one fatty acid molecule will produce nine acetyl group. That's the end point. The process we, have, we are going to see an oxidative process, okay? So, 
the, the steps which are involved here is the uh, activated, first the activation, first the activation of fatty acid. Once the activation of fatty acid is there, then it is, uh, the, then the, the step is the activation, after the activation, an oxidation. Oxidation and to uh, a double bond. Double bond of a carbon saturated carbon with a double bond. It make a, a carbon. I'll I'll tell you here. See if you have a one carbon one here. The, this is a chain. Okay, but here you have a, the carbon which is oxidized means if this is the carbon saturated carbon. It is going to be the removal of electrons, which will be removal. If the removal of electron means this uh, saturated become a unsaturated one here. Okay. So you you are really introducing it. You are in, by oxidation means you are introducing a double bond in a you know in a in 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 a, in a, in a very long lengthy fatty acid. So in this fatty acid, first step is the oxidation. And when the oxidation occur, it will introduce a double bond. Okay. Then what happened after this? Once the double bond be introduced after the oxidation, then the another step which is involved in the hydration. Hydration means introduction of OH group. So here one other group are the first two you talk with I mean here the OH group. Hydroxyl group is being added to it. Okay, you will step by why it will go in one direction. You know the terminal end of the fatty acid. If we wherever the the CH3, uh, I mean the last two carbon where the CHO, see double bond will be removed and then it is being converted into a, a single bond to what OH group. That meaning introduction, hydration of uh, the OH group is introduced, and then the finally, I mean the next step is the C. OH group and then you have got because the double bond is being OH group and then it's going on. So this one, this hydroxyl group now is going to be oxidized to keto group. Okay, now hydroxyl group, it is going to be oxidized, next step oxidation, another oxidation process. So initially oxidation, hydration, another oxidation this group is be removed to keto group. Okay. What is keto group? Here I put over here. Okay. OH become C double bond and then C double bond O. Okay. So it's going on now. So this is a keto group. That's a keto ketone. And then what happened? That's a, a, a fatty acid. The fatty acid is cleaved by coenzyme A another molecule, coenzyme A, which will bind, there's a, a, a cleavage will occur. This molecule will be cleaved and the coenzyme A will be added to it and yielded by CH3C double bond O and then you have a coenzyme A. Suppose this is CH3 and then CO. So what happened, the OH is going to be con converted to CO and then the CO means the keto group, C double bond O keto. At this breakdown by the coenzyme is introduced at this juncture and cleave. This is uh, something like a C18 molecule. After cleavage, what you have, you have acetyl CoA that the two carbon unit is removed. The rest of the molecule is C16. You got the point? Started with C18 and now it's going to here, two carbon unit and C16. So it's minus two. So the coenzyme A will act as cleave this bond, and this is a very strong one. Okay, CH3 and uh, to breaking the carbon to carbon bond, we have to spend a lot of energy, and that is the coenzyme A, which is a highly energized molecule, which will do the job to break down or degrade the long chain fatty acid. So the next uh, uh, step in the uh, degradation process. Is to release of release of the coin uh, acetyl coenzyme A. Okay, so all these fatty acids, all the fatty acids now degraded to acetyl 
coins. Okay? Okay? That is the uh, net uh, product of any fatty acids. Suppose if you have a, an, uh, because I said that double C18, okay, it is the mathematics will work on 9 acetyl coa. Suppose if you have a C19, okay, um, like an uh, odd number of that carbon, then what will happen? The last three carbon will go as a propionyl coa. Propionyl coa. Propionyl, P R O P I O N Y L C O A. Propionyl coa. This means three carbon unit. Just for the last one will go on to that. We will see later on, I mean, what page it will degrade. But meanwhile, we will see what the four steps which involve in fatty acid synthesis. That synthesis process. Okay. Now, the synthesis it involves, again, the four steps as I mentioned earlier. Number one, assembling the individual unit. Now, assembling, assembling the individual unit. What is the individual unit? Already I mentioned earlier, the, it should start from acetyl coa acetyl coenzyme A, which just now I mentioned before, all these long chain fatty acids degraded into a small of the two carbon unit of acetyl coa. Now we are going to build up from these two carbon unit of acetyl coa back to fatty acid. That's the synthesis process. Okay. Now assembling, you need the material that the acetyl coenzyme A, also another molecule of activated, activated acyl group acyl group, another coenzyme A, okay? Um, and also, yeah, melanyl unit, actual group and melanyl, melanyl unit. So, these are some of the material which is necessary for the assembling as the synthesis, okay? So, first step is assembling. So, the synthesis in the cell, the cell will assemble, accumulate or collect all this acetyl CoA from the cell or the cytoplasm then another acyl group it will recruit, and another melanyl unit, another another fatty acid actually, then also will be uh, recruited for that site. Now what happens? Second one. The melanyl unit, this one, melanyl unit, condenses. No, melanyl, melanyl unit, okay. It will condenses to acetyl group. See this acetyl coa, it condenses. I put condenses. Condenses to acetyl group acetyl group, acetyl coenzyme unit, acetyl unit. So, if you condense these two, it will form four carbon units. This is already two, another two here, and then you have got the four carbon unit. The ultimate, I'll write the another one. So, now you have a four carbon unit is being synthesized. Now, the third step, the third step, the carbonyl group is reduced to methylene. Carbonyl group is being reduced, reduced to methylene group. I'll write it separately, methylene group. Meaning, C double bond O, okay, carbonyl group, okay, or the keto group, and uh, if you have a carbonyl group, another molecules, you know, carbon, another carbon which is going out. But the CO group, which is present at the end, suppose the carbonyl unit from all, what will happen at this time, it will be going to be reduced with, uh, with hydrogen. Re reduction means you're adding of hydrogen to it. And then what will happen, this carbonyl unit, it will become uh, CH2. So CH2, we call it as methylene group. So the carbonyl group become, become methylene group, addition of hydrogen. If you remember exactly the last one from the oxidation, this is being oxidized. That is removal of electron, but he, that is called oxidation. Always you remember that's a mathematical uh, field. That removal of electron is called oxidation. Addition of electron is called reduction. So here we are adding the hydrogen, that means we are using a reduction power. In other words, we are reducing the carbonyl unit to a methylene unit. This is called a methylene unit, okay? In, the, in three steps, okay, 
that is uh, there are three steps involved in the addition of methylene group okay what are the three steps a uh, yeah, reduction okay reduction and then uh, a yeah, dehydration a yeah, dehydration and then another reduction another reduction if you remember the previous uh, 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 oxidative uh, degradation process you uh, know first step in that case oxidation and then hydration and then another oxidation but here it is exactly the reverse when you add a carbonyl group in a methylene group you are doing in the synthesis process a reduction a degradation and another reduction in all this process in this step yes on the conversion of carbonyl group into a methylene group okay just opposite to the degradation process now the fourth step is the the formation of uh, the fourth step is the formation of four unit okay formation of four carbon unit four carbon unit that is called butyl coa b u t y r y l butyl coenzyme a so you are starting with acetyl coenzyme a which is a two carbon unit of acetyl coa now you are going to synthesize the four carbon unit of butyl coenzyme a okay so this is the uh, first uh, uh, two carbon is added L then the next step what you will get this butyl coenzyme a as the uh, template now the another two molecules of uh, i mean two carbon unit of acetyl coa will join together and follow the same four step process to make six carbon unit okay i'll write it here okay first we start with melanyl coa plus acetyl coa two carbon unit to synthesize butyl butyl coa that means four carbon unit now the butyl coenzyme a condenses with the uh, two carbon unit of acetyl coa another molecule of acetyl acetyl coenzyme a to synthesize the product six carbon unit six carbon fatty acid and then plus two then what you get eight carbon unit like that you know it will going again and again eight carbon unit to 10 12 and 14 and then you got 16 and 18 carbon unit so this cycle is going on and on on and on on and on that the synthesis that's what you have a long chain fatty acids okay so it this is going to be repeated process for the synthesis again and again and again okay so the next process what we need to know about the fatty acid metabolism is the the triacylglycerol i mean what are the energy molecule which i mentioned before so uh, before i just want to go i want to check with you guys do you have any uh, doubt or question so far do you follow now see first two step we did study the degradation process another one is the synthesis process both process are exactly the mirror image of uh, each other but one process we are studying about oxidation hydration and oxidation that's the degradation in the synthesis we do a reduction a dehydration and a reduction just like an opposite way of the reaction one is the degradation of the long chain fatty acid to acetyl coenzyme a that is the end product now the synthesis process the starting point is acetyl coenzyme a and from that we are continuing the adding just like a two carbon unit two carbon unit two carbon unit to synthesis the large molecule of fatty acid you follow now uh, that is soma go ahead that, that is soma yes yes on the for the assembly process yes okay what was uh, number 2 in the assembly I, process i know like number yeah yes sir okay assembly process you have to do the melanyl coenzyme a melanyl coenzyme a or melanyl unit condenses condenses with acetyl coenzyme mm -hmm. first one is the assembling only acetyl coa so this is the second process and the third one as i mentioned here here carbonyl group reduced to methylene group right and the the fourth yes. process is the the butyl formation of 
butyl coenzyme A. That's the fourth, the final process. So that's why you have got the four carbon unit synthesis. You follow? Yes, I got it. Oh, okay. Great. Any other questions here, Sugarland? No. Here, there in Victoria? No. No question. Okay. Now we'll go into the storage of uh, the fatty acid storage. In other words, the other uh, I, I mentioned earlier, try uh, acyl, A-C-Y-L, acyl glycerol. Try acyl glycerols as um, or they are the concentrated energy source. Otherwise, I call it a tag. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, how we are going to denote this one because this is a glycerol and this is a fatty acid. And they are stored in adipose cells. Okay. They are the high energy sources. And they are the highly, highly metabolic energy source. Okay. That is the metabolic energy source. How much that metabolic energy? If, we, if I uh, um, when compare to fatty acids or carbohydrates and protein, for one gram of fatty acids, how much that will give an energy? Like a fatty acid in one gram, it will give you 38 kilojoules per gram. Per gram. Okay. And carbohydrate for the one gram, carbs, carbohydrates, E-A-R-B-S, not caps, carbs. That gives 17 kilojoules per gram. If you have one gram of carbohydrates, will give this much amount of energy, 17 kilojoules. And proteins, if you have one protein, or sorry, one gram of protein, if you consume, that will give you four kilojoules per gram calories. So if you if you consider which one is the highest one. On all this, if you consume more of fat, you are consuming more of energy. You you are producing more of energy. I mean, this energy is released from one gram. So the one gram of carb is less. The one gram of protein is less than carbohydrate. And if you if you think that the tag why because the the triacylglycerol they are non-polar. They are non-polar. That means it is not miscible with water. Okay? And they form anhydrous form. Anhydrous means it is not miscible with water. Anhydrous form. It can exist in anhydrous form. And it can be stored. And, and if you compare to carbohydrates, the carb are carbohydrates and they are polar. That means absorb water, absorb water, and then uh, for, uh, for example, one gram of glycogen, glycogen molecule, one gram of glycogen, it will absorb two grams of water. See, that's the process uh, when you take excess of carbohydrate, people, they say, uh, you know, you become more obese or something like that. Uh, weight loss reduction by Atkins diets, they mainly uh, rely on this process. If you consume large amount of, uh, of um, carbohydrates that may be stored as glycogen, and the glycogen also hold more water. And, you know, that's the another way to explain for the Atkins diet, but that's a different mechanism, and we will see later on of this course. Okay? Um, in the one gram of that meaning one gram of uh, tag or triacylglycerol anhydrase, they are 6.75 times, okay, higher than what? Glycogen. More absorb water than glycogen. More of uh, this, the energy resources. So if more energy, 6.7 times higher, more energy that is being released by one gram of tag rather than, you know, in compared to one gram of glycogen. So one gram of glycogen will give you, you know, less than. Actually, if you have one gram of triacid, glycerol, fatty acid, you get 6.75 times higher than glycogen. 
the energy. So that's why in the evolutionary process, in the evolution, it is being favored, that is, uh, the energy reservoir for the evolutionary process, tag is favored. You more tag, that means you are storing more energy and thereby, you know, when there is a mutation or anything like to one uh, species to the another species of evolution, and this tag plays a major role. In, in other words, we also calculate 70 kilogram of men and how much storage of tag? 11 kilogram of tag. Imagine, this much of tag we have it. So if you reduce, if you want to sudden reduction of your weight loss, you can get rid of this tag, you will reduce 60 kilogram from 70 kilogram. Okay, so that's the calculation. How to do that? Don't ask me. Okay. Well, there are a lot of procedures we can we can follow. We can discuss later on. Okay. Um, in mammals, where the tag is stored, the triazole withdrawal, or they are where they stored under the skin, under the skin, are uh, the subcutaneous fat. That called subcutaneous fat. See, the under the skin, you got subcutaneous fat. And uh, also, they also in the mammals, uh, it also surrounding the visceral organs, belly fat, right? They call it like surrounding visceral organs, viscera, visceral organs, surrounding the hip organ. because the internal organs surrounding the internal organs, internal organs, internal organs include liver, kidney, you yeah. know. So those are pancreas, or intestine, and all those surrounding that area, you have more of fat is accumulating. So this is the, where these are the tag which accumulate different parts of the body, and thereby you may get the obese. And, and what type of cells are there in the, in the storage? The cells, as I mentioned earlier, adipose cells, otherwise fat cells are adipocyte. And they sell, they adapt, adapt to synthesis, to synthesis as well as they also store the fat, or fatty acids, adipose cells. They adapt to synthesis as well as the store inside the cells, the fatty acid cells. Okay. Now, muscles also store the tag, muscles. Another one. Muscle also stores fat as tag, triazyl glycerol tag, and uh, for its energy needs, because the muscle also needs more of energy when you do it, does it work, right? And the tag energy source for uh, example, you know, for example, for the muscle, we can give the migratory birds migration. The birds' migration from, uh, they also, you know, mention one of the uh, birds or golden plover, um, golden plover, I don't know if this guy, have you seen this one from Victoria, they are coming from Alaska, Alaska to southern tip, and uh, if you know about the ornithologists are the bird watchers, southern America. They are lot. They are watching um, some of those uh, birds, migratory birds. So the people they are coming from Canada and watching here uh, in Victoria. Uh, there are some places where you can see these birds are coming and they are resting and then they are going up. But in um, these, these are the uh, some of the birds. They are coming from the Alaska uh, and they are migrating from the ocean. And some of them. They are traveling from 3,800 kilometers or 2,400 miles, no stop, okay, without stop, non-stop, on, without food. They can fly on the, over the oceans, over the ocean. How they do? How do they fly? Muscle stores fat as, as the triacylglycerol, so that really helps to uh, the move these birds from one place to the other. That's that storage energy. Okay. Now, the lipids on diet. Now we are going to see how 
we are going to receive the fat from diet. Okay? Whatever the e fat which you are eating as a lipid or fat uh, from diet. So we have to be very careful what type of diet we are eating then how we are going to digest it. Suppose we are eating a lot of fat and uh, uh, or, or, or the lipids or uh, you got some oily stuff or greasy stuff whatever you call it and that is being digested by pancreatic lipase. The enzyme digested by pancreatic lipases, pancreatic lipases. So this is the enzyme, pancreatic lipase is the enzyme which will act on lipid. Lipase, lipid. Lipid is a substrate, lipase enzyme, uh, lipase is an enzyme which will act on the lipid. Okay. And the intestinal enzymes uh, of the lipases, because you are eating it, digested, that means you are eating through your mouth and then you are getting into the intestine and the intestine is the really the fun part there where you get the small intestinal intestinal enzyme lipases and this lipases which is coming from where from pancreatic lipases to the intestine pancreatic juices that contains more of pancreatic lipases and that lipases helps digestion of lipids from the tag Let's see for here. The tag, whatever the triacylglycerol, which is coming from your diet, okay, that getting as a tag molecule, and it is being digested by by the enzyme lipases, which is coming from pancreas. That is going to be diacylglycerol. Diacyl. This is the triacylglycerol become diacylglycerol. In other words, it is called a tag become DAG, okay, and then the DAG again by lipases, another lipase reaction, you got monoacylglycerol, monoacylglycerol, in other words we call it as the MAG MAG, so tag become DAG, tag become DAG and DAG become MAG, I mean this is the enzyme by lipases. Now, the lipases finally is a, is a lipid molecule, okay. It acts in a water insoluble into water soluble. That's, that's very important. So here the tag which is a dietary, which is a water uh, insoluble fat and now it should be getting after the lipids, okay. Lipids digested by lipases in other words. And you get the, you have a monoacylglycerol as a product, okay. And this should be transported, again, some of the fatty acids also being there. And these fatty acids and the mag, and, and they have to transport it across the membrane. But the membrane, which is the biological membrane, which is, uh, uh, strictly speaking, it's an unstirred water layer, meaning they are water soluble here. So here the water is insoluble and uh, it should go across how they go. So what type of technique which you used to do when you have a greasy stuff which is getting into your cloth or something like that? You are using to, to, uh, to make the lipid to remove from your cloth and other places you, you use uh, a detergent, remember? Different type of detergent, okay? laundry detergent you use normally. So that type of detergent, here we, our body also synthesizes a type of detergent and the detergent we call it as a bile salts. So the bile salts play a major role to make the water insoluble monoacylglycerol and fatty acid to make it a soluble one and thereby it can facilitate the transport across the membrane. So this is being enhanced by bile salts. Bile salts will help move from the lipid from the inside the lumen into the bloodstream or inside the mucosal cells. So that's what it's the bile salts will do that job. So the bile salts will like an amphipathic molecule. What is amphipathic molecule? Amphipathic molecule. Amphipathic molecule. What is that amphipathic molecule? It's a bile salts. What is amphipathic? What is amphibian? 
the animal which will live both in land and water, right? So that's the amphibian, that's why we call it. The same way amphipathic means it can soluble, amphipathic molecule, they can soluble, soluble in water as well as it is soluble in lipid, okay, non-polar. So it has both polar group and non-polar group in the same molecule, so it can act either way. If you want a water soluble, yes, it is a water soluble. If you want to make this uh, amphipathic molecule in the lipid, yes, it is also soluble in the lipid. So it is intermediate. So it will mediate from the luminal side of the intestine to inside the body or the blood across the membrane. So it helps really the uh, movement of the fatty acid across the membrane. So it forms a yeah, micelle. Micelle. M-I-C-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E, micelle or micelle. And uh, this will uh, form like a, like it orient the molecule, orient the molecule. In a way, it will it will uh, get a you know. See, suppose if you get a droplet like this is a lipid, so the fatty acids become like this after joining with the uh, after joining with the bile acids. Suppose these are bile acids, which is coming bile salt. Bile salt makes aggregate, and thereby this portion of the one wherever there is an expose the region where the lipase can attack. Lipase can attack on this, and thereby the triacylglycerol is easily being degraded and then easily transported across transported across the uh, plasma membrane of the intestinal cells. You can also see uh, at the figure 22.3 in your textbook. So suppose if you don't have a bile acids or bile salts, if you don't have bile acid deficiency in certain type of uh, diseases because the bile is secreted from liver, suppose if the uh, liver will produce bile and the bile is stored in a gallbladder, gallbladder, and then gallbladder to intestine is coming up, okay, in a, in a bile, the bile acid present inside the B-I-L-E, bile, intestine. Suppose if the gallbladder become a stone or gallstone which is forming because of the bile salts and everything, so it will not flow to liver to intestine. In that case, what you get really, fatty acids is not being, or fat is not being uh, digested and um, thereby you get the accumulation of this uh, uh, bile onto the blood, the extremely, um, you know, the pigment, the yellow pigment or porphyrin in that, you get, you know, the maxima jaundice or obstructive jaundice, which you get all the yellow pigments on eyelids and, and all the swats and everything. So you need to remove the gallbladder or gallstone should be removed. So that is another way which we can look into the biomedical point of view on this one, okay? So coming to our story, if there is uh, a lack of bile salts, so what will happen, you get, you get uh, uh, the fatty acid is not absorbed and that is being excreted in the feces. So if you have the more of fatty acid excreted in the feces in the form of uh, steric acid, S-T-E-A-R-I-C, steric acid, these are type kind of fatty acid excessively stored in our body and that is being unmetabolized, not being absorbed, excreted in the feces and that is called the, the term for this particular disease we call this steatorrhea. S-T-E-A-T-O-R-R-H-E-A. -E like a diarrhea this is the steatorrhea where more of fatty acid is excreted in the feces. Now, as I mentioned earlier, bile salts helps to move the uh, fatty acids um, back onto the mucosal cell into the intestine. And what happened after that in the intestine? What happened in the intestine? So we are tracing how where the fat will go, fatty acids will go now, okay? In the intestine, they transported as a chylomicron, C-H-Y, chylomicrons. Okay, chylomicrons, a small, uh, another a type of uh, a molecule, which is assembly of all the fatty acids, the intestinal mucosal cell. So the chylomicrons are synthesized in the intestine, and the intestine, the intestinal mucosal cell, okay, 
in the intestine where you know absorbed cells like a microvilli like which is going on that one right where it is being absorbed is going in so in the cells which is going across but in the inside the cell you know inside the cell it forms that tag or triacylglycerol is resynthesized is resynthesized See, you have to be remember the first one. What happened in the luminal side? You have a lipases, you have a, a bile salts as a detergent. Also, you have a tag, and the tag is being broken down to final stage of monoacylglycerol and free fatty acids. So, these free fatty acids, along with the bile salt, going across the intestinal membrane, getting into the cells, the intestinal cells. The cells now what will do? It will resynthesize the tag again. So the tag in the luminal side and the inside also the tag because it resynthesized by the enzyme which is present inside the cell. See, that you should remember uh, the fact. See the fat is not absorbed directly, but it is broken down and then get into the mucosal cell again. It is resynthesized back onto the triacylglycerol. So now we are back on the track. The triacylglycerol synthesis is again synthesized inside the uh, mucosal cells. Okay. Once it's synthesized, um, how it is synthesized? That uh, thing is the fatty acids plus monoacylglycerols. Okay. And they are packaged. They are both of them packaged to lipoproteins. Lipoproteins. And and they, all of them, they just form just like a particle, like a chylomicrons. Some of them fatty acids, uh, uh, some of them monoacylglycerol together to form tag as well. So you have a tag, mag, dag, fatty acids, and uh, you know, on the lipoprotein, some of the lipoprotein together to form a particle like this. So small particle of, uh, is being synthesized, all of them put together. And this is called a chylomicron particle. And these chylomicrons, they have a specific dimensions. They start from 200, uh, sorry, 2,000 angstrom, that's to 200 nanometer, that's the large one, 200 nanometer length. See, this is the diameter, diameter of the particle, or diameter 2,000 2, angstrom unit, or 200 nanometer. This is the range, 2,000 angstrom to 200 nanometer length, or, or, or not length, it's a diameter of the particle. See that the particle, the large size of the particle, small particle, large size. So you have a different range of the particles will be produced, okay? So this is the chylomicron, small size, large size, and different size it will be produced. And the protein we normally encounter here, the chylomicron, we call it like a apo protein, apo B48, apo lipoprotein. This is a type of uh, lipoprotein. We call apo lipoprotein. Apo B48 is the is the one we call we normally see inside the chylomicron. So the chylomicron is the, again they transport. What they do? Transport fatty fat, and they also transport cholesterol. Cholesterol, cholesterol and fat. That means this is this is the chylomicron's function. Okay, transport fat and cholesterol. Um, also, the fat in a, in a sense, fat soluble vitamins. Fat soluble vitamin. What is fat soluble vitamin? Remember, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E. And ADE K, good, yeah. Vitamin ADE K, these are the fat soluble vitamins. Suppose if you have some problem with fatty acid absorption, means you don't get vitamin A, you don't get vitamin D, you don't get vitamin E, vitamin K, they are absent. They are not. So that's to be very careful whenever they, they have a, some sort of obstructive jaundice and you have to take a lot of vitamin tablets and everything separately because the, these uh, uh, molecules cannot be absorbed through the intestine. That's very, very important, the point. So then, the chylomicrons, after the intestinal cells, I said 
luminal cell and then getting across the intestine and then the intestinal cells which will produce more of chylomicrons and these chylomicrons now is getting into the lymph, lymphatic system, lymph system and the lymph, after the lymph, it enters into blood. Okay. So, the, the pathway, how this uh, uh, fatty acids is being transported from one area to the other. This is the luminal side, there the, your dietary, where the digestion which is occurring, and then the intestinal absorption, where you have, you have a bile acid helps to move, and then chylomicron is synthesized, and the chylomicron is entering the lymphatic system or circulation from the lymphatics, it's getting entered into the blood. So, unlike the amino acids or carbohydrate, which will go direct into the blood, but the uh, fatty acids or the fat, that will go through chylomicron, through lymphatic system and through lymphatic to the bloodstream. And then it is distributed to different organs. So, this is, uh, uh, then what? After the lymph, the blood, and, and then the chylomicrons, uh, in the, in the fatty acids are chylomicrons, um, which is being distributed to tissues. So, what happens inside the tissues? You have, um, as a, there are three stages which is involved for the, you know, how the tissues feel the fatty acids. Now, it is now the fatty acids, whatever you eat, now it is arriving onto the tissues. There are different type of tissues into the body like a kidney, heart, lungs, and, and, you know, pancreas, kidney, brain. So, different tissues. I put tissues for common, different type of tissues. So, so the chylomicrons are the fatty acids and everything, they are coming out here. They are coming here, coming here, coming here, coming here. Okay. Now, what happens? I'll stop it here. I'll give you a break. Then we will discuss further after 10 minutes of the break, okay? Do you have any questions so far? Alejandro, you want to eat something? Yes, I'm done, okay, hungry. Good. Okay, okay, whatever. So, get your chylomicron hype. Good. Go back onto our topic again. Um, so where we stop, we eat something and, and, and digested fat, and, and all of them are getting digested in the intestine, and then back onto the um, you know uh, intestinal mucosal cells, and then uh, chylomicron and synthesis going on, and lymphatics and lymphatics to the blood, and blood to the tissues. So we are having the fatty acids are sitting near the tissues and then the tissues will do a job, okay? They have to move these tag to degrade inside the tissue and where they will be degraded, where it will be broken down inside the tissue, inside the tissue, okay? So it's the outside but it's getting inside and it's broken down. So that's the part we are going to discuss now, okay? The lipids, whatever the thing in chylomicrons, right, which is present in the chylomicron, that should be mobilized. The step one is mobilization. Mobilization. From outside of the tissue, outside the cell or outside tissue to inside the cell. Inside the cell. Okay, that's the first thing. That's the transporting. So, for that, uh, why we have to move? Because the tag inside the cells, the tag or whatever the chylomicron, whatever the uh, DAG or MAG, and that should be transported inside the cell where that is going to be degraded into free fatty acids, right? Fatty acids. And uh, then to visceral moiety. And then the fatty acids will go for the energy, for production of energy. Okay, that the oxidation stuff which we earlier we discussed about it. And this energy is used for the tissues. So, the tissue will be happy whenever it gets a, a, a fatty acids getting across into the cell and the cell will produce more of uh, the energy. The tissue will produce more of energy. Okay. So, now the, the next step 
um, on this, um, the fatty acids, fatty acids, okay, that should be activated. Now the fatty acids are getting across, which is getting inside the cell, and uh, which is getting activated. Okay. The fatty acid activation. And this is being transported into the mitochondria. Now the fatty acids are present in the cytoplasm, and it should be getting activated. The activated fatty acids now is getting into transported. I put like the transported into mitochondria because inside the cell, the mitochondria is the site where the degradation process is taking place. So, if you see into the, uh, I'm drawing a small cotton of the cell and this is the nucleus and you have a mitochondria like this is going on, okay, this is the nucleus and this is the mitochondria. So, the fatty acid is getting in in the cytoplasm and it is getting activated and then slowly is getting inside the mitochondria, it is getting into the mitochondria. So the process is, uh, the first step is the entry, that's what we said, mobilization. In the cytoplasm, it is being activated, the fatty, fatty acids are activated here, activated. So once it is activated, then only it gets into the mitochondria, okay. So for the entry into the mitochondria, it needs like a passport, it needs a visa, right. So it should not, the fatty acid, whatever present in cytoplasm cannot enter just like that. It should be activated and then there is a permit here and it will check, check post and that will allow only activated fatty acids getting inside the mitochondria. And then once you're getting into the mitochondria, okay, into the mitochondria, the third step, the second step is the activation. First step, which I mentioned earlier, which is the first step is mobilization and into the cell. And second step is activation and uh, that helps to transport into the mitochondria. And now it's the third step. What is the third step? Now fatty acids are inside the, inside the, inside the mitochondria, inside mitochondria. I put mito, mitochondria. And by step by step, step by step, step. It is going to be broken down into what is the, the final product of the fatty acid breakdown, the final step, final step to acetyl ACE, A -C -E, acetyl coenzyme A. This is a two carbon unit. Okay. So the final step in the, in the mitochondria of the fatty acid uh, oxidation or degradation which is over at the end of acetyl CoA or acetyl coenzyme A. So after this what will happen because it is present inside the mitochondria and the inside the mitochondria and the matrix what you have? You have a TCA cycle enzyme, TCA cycle. So what you get the acetyl CoA, acetyl CoA enter into the TCA cycle which already we have studied earlier. So once you get into the TCA cycle, what? You get the different step process. It will release of the FADH2 and NADH. Also in some step got ATP. So all of them, these molecules again enter into the next step after the TCA cycle into the electron transport chain in the mitochondria or the inner membrane. So the TCA cycle which is present in the matrix acetyl CoA enzyme A also present in the matrix after the degradation of fatty acid. Getting the TCA cycle produce FADH2, MADH, all of them in the TCA cycle. That enter to electron transport chain of the mitochondria present in the inner mitochondrial membrane and this will produce more of ATP or the energy potential. So you have more of energy is being synthesized. So this is the process. So fatty acids, getting into the cell, fatty acids degraded into acetyl coenzyme A inside the mitochondria. So all of them are taking place in the mitochondria. So the mitochondria is the one, is the energy source, okay, or the uh, powerhouse of the cell. Now you know how our cells are getting energized. Once the cells are getting energized, it will, the tissues are getting energized. When the tissues are getting energized, your organ got energized. 
if the organ got energized and you are jumping up and down because you got more energy on that, the organism is getting more energy. So that is the, the way which we have to study. Okay. Now, let's go on to how the tag is being hydrolyzed. We will go in a, in a stepwise process. Uh, the first process, the tag, or the triacylglycerol, how they are hydrolyzed, because it is present in the cell, as I mentioned earlier, right? Is it hydrolyzed? How yeah, they are going to broken down, or the break, uh, degradation? Hydrolyzed. How they are triacylglycerol, hydrolyzed. As I mentioned earlier, um, this is the tag, right? You have a fatty acid chain and a glycerol chain. That's why the triacyl, this is one, two, three, triacyl group, one glycerol molecule there, okay? Now, this has been hydrolyzed by hormones. Hormones stimulated. It's not like a direct hormone. The hormone, okay, initiate or stimulate. Stimulated. Hormone stimulated lipases. Hormone stimulated lipases will act. The previous one which I was mentioning before, that will that will act as a pancreatic lipases, intestinal lipases. Now I am talking about hormone stimulated lipases. In other words, they are called the intracellular lipases. Okay, you have to remember that. Two types of lipases. Digestive lipases, that is pancreatic lipases. And these lipases, which are present inside the cell or the tissues, will activate by hormone stimulated lipases or intracellular lipases. Okay. Now we will see um, in the uh, physiological situation. Suppose you are um, you are in a night sleep, sleep and you ate around maybe you know four or five o'clock, five p.m. Your dinner or five to six p.m. and then you wake up morning, uh, six o'clock or seven o'clock a.m. So you are not e eating in between that time. What will happen? You are fasting, really. That's why you are breaking your fast, the breakfast before that. So if you want to uh, run at the time, uh, what you get, you really get the energy, morning energy, without eating. Before you eat your breakfast, the energy is coming from fatty acids or the fat. Okay. That's what the early morning runner. Okay. They are using all the fatty acid and they burn up that energy. If you take a morning breakfast, a heavy breakfast and then run, what will happen? You are, you are not going to lose any weight. You have to run your empty stomach or small amount, I mean very, very uh, little amount of the diet, or not, not much of, of the energy input. So you cannot break down your fat or weight loss program. So you have to have an early morning runner and at that time, at that time, early morning runner, at that time, what you have, excess amount of glucagon. Glucagon is a hormone and epinephrine. We also studied in the previous class, epinephrine. And these hormones in high level in the blood because they are the hormone as a fasting and condition or if you are not eating, this hormone will be highly activated at that time. So when these hormones are activated, where you have stored the fatty cell, I mean fatty acids are stored in the cells, they are stored in adipose cells. Adipose cells. Okay. Are the fat cells. So in the adipose cells, they trigger 7 TM, transmembrane, T for trans, M for membrane, and then the 7 is the domain, 7 fold, you got 7 uh, transmembrane receptors folded receptors. Receptors are present. Okay. Suppose if this is the cell or the fatty cell or the adipose cell. Adipose cells, the nucleus present at the end of the cells is not. So most of the region which is uh, filled with the adipose, uh, I mean the fatty acids or the fat is stored in the form of tag. So what happens here, the hormone, the hormone, which hormone we are talking about, the glucagon, glucagon, and epinephrine, epinephrine. And these hormones are high in the level, and they will activate onto the membrane. And the membrane receptor is the 7TM membrane. 
and they activate adenylate cyclase. Okay, I write it in another paper. Like a 7 TM, that the receptor. Receptor, what this receptor do? The receptor will bind with the hormones. Which hormones? Which will uh, glucagon and epinephrine. So glucagon and epinephrine, they are the hormone. And the receptor, the receptor and the hormone bind. As soon as the hormone bind to the receptors, the receptor will activate the enzyme. They activate adenylate cyclase. Adenylate cyclase enzyme. Adenylate cyclase enzyme will change the ATP molecule into cyclic AMP molecule. ATP to AMP by adenylate cyclase enzyme. So cyclic AMP is being produced. Okay. And this cyclic AMP, in further, it will stimulate protein kinase. Protein kinase A. It stimulate protein kinase A. And this protein kinase A then it will do the function to phosphorylate, okay? We also call it as a, like a PKA, like a protein kinase A in short form. You know, I am abbreviating it. And it will phosphorylate. It will add a phosphor, phosphate group. Phosphorylate means it add a phosphate group where? To phosphate group to a particular protein. Okay, two type of protein it will add. A Perilipin, P R I L I P I N. Perilipin, a protein, a fat droplet associated protein. This is a, a protein. This protein is a fat droplet associated protein. Okay. Another molecule, it will add phosphorylate. PKA is phosphorylate. Hormone sensitive lipases. Hormone sensitive lipases. Sensitive lipases. This is otherwise called the intracellular lipases. Uh, so it will phosphorylate A, perilipin, a protein, and another one is the hormone sensitive lipases. So once this lipase has been activated, then it will cleave or act on tag. Okay. So that's what it is. The 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 the, the steps which involve the activation step. So the mechanism here is the the perilipin they restructure the these it will restructure restructure okay the fat droplets or the tag so it position change the position and thereby it will act the lipases will act on that so perilipin as a protein it will modify you change the position of the tag into the into the lipid droplets and then also the the phosphorylation of the perilipin okay it will it will restructure the tag restructure the tag okay and then the perilipin it will do another function the perilipin perilipin after it been activated with the phosphorylate i put perilipin p means it is activated phosphorylate and it will also trigger it triggers what? Release of a cofactor. Release of a cofactor of an enzyme. Co-activator or the cofactor of uh, the enzyme for adipose triglyceride lipases. Okay. Adipose, adipose triglyceride lipases. So it will release a cofactor, factor, the perilipin. So that means it's called the ATGL, adipose triglyceride lipases. So it will release this molecule. So this lipases now is being activated. Okay. So it will activate ATGL, ATGL. Now it will activate on tag. It will activate on tag and the it will release what? Diacylglycerol, DAG, and then the DAG again it will release into MAG or monoacylglycerol, MAG, and then what happened the MAG? It will release us to fatty acid, free fatty acid, FFA, plus the fatty acid and the glycerol moiety, glycerol. 
So what happened to the glycerol? The glycerol that will enter into uh, a glycolytic pathway. Glycolytic. We'll see that one. Also, it will also enter through the uh, dihydroxyacetone phosphate for the gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis. So the glycerol will have its own pathway after degradation, and the free fatty acid is now it is released, which is present in the cytoplasm. Always you remember the reaction which is taking place, DAG, DAG, MAG, all of them are taking place in the cytoplasm and the ATGL which is being released as a, as a, as a release of the hormone sensitive uh, enzyme that is activated by glucagon and epinephrine. Okay, they are acting on the membrane level. After the membrane is getting into the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm, these changes are occurring, TAG, DAG, MAG and free fatty acids and glycerol. Now the free fatty acids are roaming around inside the cytoplasm. Okay. Now what will happen onto the cytoplasm there? Yeah. What happens to that one? Okay. Let's see. The hormone sensitive lipases will act on all the level, tag to mag, dag and dag to mag. Okay. And the glycerol which is going to be the another sub-product or by-product. We will see that one. So in, in all, in total, what we uh, get here, the hormones, hormones activating, hormones activating what? Lipolysis. Do you follow now? So there are two types of lipolysis which we have studied. The earlier one is the diet which whatever we are eating, diet, and that is being a lipases, which is the pancreatic lipases, pancreatic, pan lipases, I put abbreviation, pan, pancreatic lipases, which will get onto the monoglyceride to diglyceride, DAG, and everything, and that is being transported across in the blood, and blood to the tissues. In the tissues, you get the hormone-activating lipases. These molecules are present in the tissues, tissue level. And then it will degrade. So ideally, the weight gain or the weight loss program, they have to work on these hormone-sensitive lipases, not the diet. So you can also control the input of the lipid to the body. But at the same time, if you want to have weight loss program, you should reduce this dietary fatty acids or input, activate the hormone activator. The hormone means, as I, as I mentioned, glucagon and epinephrine. And they are actually uh, fasting and you fast or you do exercise, you get more of this hormone activating process or lipolysis. If you don't do it, what will happen? You have a more of obesity, more of fatty acid accumulation in our body, in the tissues. So that is the problem of the obesity now. So let us see how the, uh, the released fatty acids will act on that one, okay? As I mentioned before, the fatty acids are released um, and, and, and they can also enter into the blood. As I mentioned, into the, into the cytoplasm, um, in the, this in the cytoplasm, and also it's getting into the mitochondria, okay? That is the one way. The another one, the fatty acid can also enter, that the fatty acid from where? From adipose cells, adipose, or any other tissues. It can also enter the blood. So in the blood, what you have a protein called albumin, 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 and albumin will bind with the fatty acids and they will roam around inside their blood, fatty acid binding protein. In other words, albumin is a carrier, okay, albumin act as a carrier, carrier for fatty acids, albumin, I write the albumin, albumin. So in the blood, it carries. And also it will, it will be transported across. From where this carrier is coming from? Adipose cell. Adipose is the fat cell, right? And the fatty acids getting into the blood. And with the protein, right? Albumin. And then it will be distributed to all different tissues. Now you have tissue 1, tissue 2, tissue 3, tissue 4, tissue 5. All parts of the it's been distributed. So the hormones really acting on where? Adipose cells. So adipose cells or adipose tissues 
will act and as I mentioned earlier, will activate the different hormone sensitive lipases. All the stored fat, it is being released and different tissues is being distributed. So for this process, you need the hormone that the glucagon and the epinephrine, that you should remember. Now, what you left over is the glycerol, okay? The glycerol that will transport across, as I mentioned earlier, the glycerol one, okay? I think you can see it now here because it's some other paper which is not there. So, glycerol, this glycerol is a byproduct, byproduct. Okay, it will enter into the liver. Glycerol enter into the liver. And there it is phosphorylated, uh, adding a phosphate group. Phosphorylated. In the liver it is phosphorylated and oxidized. Oxidized to, it oxidized to dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So, glycerol now getting into the liver and then phosphorylated dihydroxyacetone phosphate is being produced. And this one, DHA, we call it DHA, dihydroxyacetone phosphate, DHAP in other words, it is being produced in the liver. And this one, DHAP, dihydroxyacetone phosphate, have a two way to go. Either it will go to glycolysis glycolysis which we have done in the glucose metabolism or the catabolism of glucose, glucose degradation pathway, dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Also it can enter into synthesis of glucose, gluconeogenesis. So that's why you should be very careful. Even if you take, I'm not taking any car but I can eat more of a fat substance like a Atkins diet. But the fatty acid can also synthesize more of glucose in through gluconeogenesis pathway. So that's another way, you know, you have to be very careful. We are not avoiding any of carb, but carb can be synthesized in, through the fatty acid, but in, 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 in spite of the, all the hormones and other uh, reactive steps which we, we require for this process, okay. Now the fatty acids linked to coenzyme A. Now what you have, the fatty acids, as I mentioned, through the blood and it goes through all the tissues, all the cells, different part of the cells, you know, cells, brain cells, uh, kidney cells, lung cells, intestinal cells, different cells, they receive the fatty acids. In there, which the, the fatty acid enter into the individual cells, they have been converted or added coenzyme A. Coenzyme A is being added to it. So fatty acid plus the coenzyme A added to it when it entered into the cell and before it is being oxidized, okay, before it is being oxidized. So fatty acid enter means cell means first it will enter where it will enter into cytoplasm. Inside the cytoplasm, in the cytoplasm, the fatty acid is being added with coenzyme A, the first activation of fatty acids, okay, first step in the activation of fatty acids. Now, this is the step the author of the book, Leninger, Albert Leninger, who has written this textbook, okay, Leninger, 1949, along with uh, Dr. Eugene Kennedy, K-E-N-N, sorry, K-E-N-N-E-D-Y, Dr. Eugene Kennedy, 1949, and they have shown already the fatty acids, now it is oxidized inside the mitochondria, oxidized inside mitochondria. So that's why this, uh, uh, he's in fascinated by the, by the biochemical pathway and he wrote a very nice book, a textbook, Leninger book, which we also followed when we studied biochemistry major in our graduate program. So the Leninger and Kennedy uh, first found out I mean, showed like fatty acids are oxidized inside the mitochondria. That's the new. So now the next step is the fatty acid activator. Okay, how they are getting inside the mitochondria? The mechanism is fatty acid is activated by 
बट इट इज थायो एस्टर लिंकेज थायो एस्टर लिंकेज इट इज बीइंग बिफोर बिफोर लिंक्ड थायो एस्टर इज लिंक्ड टू फैटी एसिड बिफोर इट गेट्स इनटू माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया where the mitochondria is the subcellular organelle where the degradation is taking place now we are talking about the individual tissues or the cells where the fatty acids are there in the cytoplasm thioester linkage is being attached or in other words coenzyme a is being added to the fatty acid and then it is being transported across the mitochondria okay so this process of the thioester linkage it involves the addition of atp molecule which is involved and the sulfhydryl group and that is of the coenzyme a coenzyme a is having a sulfhydryl group when you attach the sulfhydryl group to the fatty acid you require atp molecule okay in in other words you have a acyl group otherwise what we call it as a fatty acid we got fatty acyl uh, coenzyme a is being produced fatty acid uh, acid is having you know 18 c 18 or c 22 uh, different carbon atoms so depending upon the number of carbon we are naming that particular fatty acid i am going to give you a general name as a fatty acyl coenzyme a doesn't matter is 18 or 16 or 15 or 5 or 10 doesn't matter in general i am calling what are the fatty acids is being added to the coenzyme a through spin of atp molecule sulfhydryl group the fatty acyl coa is being produced so we call it fatty acyl coa in general okay so the acyl co the enzyme called uh, acyl coa synthase or synthetase sorry synthetase okay acyl coa synthetase is the enzyme which will add coenzyme a to fatty acids or free fatty acids free fatty acids and um in this one also acyl coenzyme a uh, coenzyme a synthetase in other words the the same name they have another name they call it as a, a fatty acid thiokinase thiokinase so both enzyme there is a different name fatty acid thiokinase or acyl coa synthetase one and the same the name is the same okay same name now we are going to talk about the next step now you have the fatty acyl fatty acid acyl coenzyme a which is present where it is present cytoplasm cytoplasm it is there now it should get into the mitochondria so inside the mi inside the mitochondria so for this there is a, a carrier protein which is involved and that is called carnitin so the we call it as a carnitin c a r n i t i n just simply remember a car which will move one place to the other right automobile like that you have a molecule called carnitin and this molecule is a protein molecule and this molecule what it will do it will bind the fatty acid here it's here and then it will be just getting across over here deliver here so it is something like a courier service carnitin molecule act like a courier service but the mechanism is interesting how they will do the carnitin which is present in the membrane they are present in the membrane mitochondrial membrane okay protein molecule membrane protein and also it is a you know it is a protein but it also act like a like a zwitterionic alcohol the carnitin again so acts like a zwitterion so it have both positive and negative charges are the same zwitterionic alcohol alcohol the carnitin molecule will have a zwitterionic alcohol and that will that will change this molecule will change um, into the inside from outside into the inside so how that will do the carnitin first first fatty acyl coa okay this will combine with the carnitin carnitin c a r n i t i n carnitin um form 
असाइल कॉर्निटीन असाइल कॉर्निटीन असाइल कॉर्निटीन सो फर्स्ट द फैटी असाइल को ये कंबाइंड विथ द कॉर्निटीन विच इज प्रेजेंट आउटसाइड ऑफ द मेम्ब्रेन टू फॉर्म असाइल कॉर्निटीन then the acyl carnitine this process okay fatty acyl this is the outside the membrane okay this acyl carnitine is being produced by the enzyme called carnitine carnitine acyl transferase 1 transferase 1 c a t 1 or cat 1 okay acyl transferase or acyl uh palmitoyl transferase in another name acyl they call it palmitoic acid they also call it palmitoyl one cpt one so we call it as a carnitoyl acyl transferase or the cat one i call it the cat one for the remember and they are present there outside the mitochondria or outer mitochondrial membrane outer mitochondria outer mitochondria you got the carnitoyl acyl transferase enzyme a and this will using the carnitin molecule transfer and to form acyl carnitin is an outside now it will transport this one from the outside to the inside now okay that inside you got the acyl carnitin now the acyl carnitin carnitin shuttles shuttle from outside this is the outside to inside this is the inside okay is getting inside inside the mitochondria and the, uh, there is an enzyme called translocase translocase another protein molecule that is an enzyme protein that enzyme will 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 change from one side into the other so the translocase will act the shuttling service this is the shuttling express translocase will change from outside to inside or transport from outside the membrane to the inside membrane of the mitochondria so now which is the inside now the acyl carnitine where it is now carnitine present in the inside okay inside and there is an another enzyme called cat carnitine acyl transferase 2 which is present inside the mitochondria and this will will cleave this one carnitine I'll, i'll write it here so the cat 2 will that is the carnitine acyl transferase 2 which is present inside the mitochondria will add the acyl carnitine which is uh, just now transported by translocation okay acyl carnitine acyl coe acyl coe carnitine right carnitine acyl coe plus the carnitine will be released so this carnitine again shuttle back to outer membrane outer membrane but the acetyl coa or sorry acyl coa or fatty acyl coa now is being transported inside the mitochondria now this is inside the mitochondria so what happen inside the mitochondria the beta oxidation or the oxidation of the fatty acid which is occurring inside the mitochondria so this is the process how from outside fatty acid from cytosol or outside the mitochondria in transported inside the mitochondria so if you remember the molecule carrier molecule which we call it as carnitine so if there is a, a difference a uh, deficiency of carnitine what will happen suppose if you encounter a deficiency deficient of the carnitine that leads to disease okay that disease will go on you cannot digest or you cannot use the fatty acid though the fatty acids are there but fatty acyl coa also there without the carnitine it cannot be transported inside the mitochondria so you will not get any uh, you know any energy so that will lead to a mild uh, muscle cramp if anyone is suffered from muscle cramp that be very caution they don't have enough carnitine in their blood stream or in their body so in the mitochondria otherwise they also suffer from severe weakness muscle weakness okay weakness and also kidney and heart okay muscle so the muscle really 
depend upon the muscle really depend upon the long chain fatty acid to produce its, uh, its energy. So you should be very careful. So you may eat everything or you have everything but without carnitine you cannot produce energy. So that is the bottom line on that part. Okay. Now out, out of uh, the, the beta oxidation which, uh, which we discussed earlier or the fatty acids oxidation or the different steps we involve like uh, oxidation and then uh, uh, hydra, hydration and oxidation and all those steps, what you get finally is the acetyl coenzyme A. Acetyl coenzyme A and this acetyl coenzyme A further enters the TCA cycle and that will produce more of NADH, FADH2 and these molecules are entering into electron transport chain and that will produce more of ATP. So that is the uh, the different steps which involve in the, the degradation and production of energy. Okay. So the complete oxidation, one example we can give, okay. Palmitate, palmitate, this is a fatty acid and this fatty acid Will, will degrade by fatty acid oxidation, it will produce 106 molecules of ATP. One molecule of palmitate will produce 106 molecules of ATP by using this pathway, degradation pathway. Okay. This is a fatty acid uh, degradation, but in, in some of them are like a unsaturated fatty acids, unsaturated fatty acid, UFA, unsaturated fatty acid. And all chain, all chain fatty acids, they also undergo the, the steps which is involved in the beta oxidation step. But they ha have an additional step, additional step to uh, degradation process. And um, they have to do uh, like an isomerase enzyme, isomerase enzyme. Also, they require a yeah, reductase enzyme reductase enzyme. So you need isomerase and reductase enzyme, they are required if you want to, uh, you know, uh, degrade of the unsaturated fatty acid or odd chain fatty acid present in, the, in your system or in your body. So the unsaturated uh, fatty acid also undergo all the step, rest of the step and that produce acetyl coenzyme A. Okay, the final step for any degradation, this is the step. But in the odd chain, you know, suppose you have a 19 or 17 or 15, okay, or 9 of these carbon atoms present in the fatty acid. At the final step for the odd chain, odd number of carbon atoms, you get propionyl, propionyl coenzyme A at the last step. And then the propionyl coenzyme A is going to be changed into succinyl coenzyme A propionyl coenzyme A, okay, that is a three carbon unit, the three carbon coenzyme A, final step, okay, and this is being transferred to succinyl coenzyme A, four carbon unit, succinyl coenzyme A, a four carbon unit, okay, this is being transferred, and that step, you know, it involves, uh, there is a conversion uh, of, um, you know, you have to have a, uh, a methyl melanyl co in between that, okay, methyl melanyl melanyl coenzyme A and then methyl melanyl coenzyme A to succinyl coenzyme A and this step it involves a vitamin B12. You have to vitamin B12 and otherwise cyanocobalamin, cyanocobalamin as a cofactor. And the cobalamin, which is present in the vitamin B12, okay, and they have a, a ring called corin ring. I'll just explain and I show to the figure. Corin ring, and there, which will bear the methane, methane bridge, you know, methylene bridge is being attached, and thereby it is being converted to succinyl coenzyme A. So, methyl melanyl coenzyme A to succinyl coenzyme A, the, you know, that is the crucial step, and that involves vitamin B12. You know, if you don't get vitamin B12, you will not get off the propanyl coa or methyl melanyl coa to succinyl coa. That is again your problem, vitamin B12 deficiency. Okay. So, in, in general, the fatty acids are oxidized on the peroxisome. 
peroxisomes. This is another uh, like mitochondria in another uh, subcellular organelles. Okay, that's uh, peroxisomes. And the peroxisomes they do not function as a, a zwitter. Uh, if they are not function, peroxisome if they are not function and they lead to a, a syndrome called uh, Zellweger's syndrome. You can also refer to the textbook. Uh, Zwiller uh, Zellweger syndrome. And for this syndrome, if you have a liver, kidney, and muscle, and then, then, uh, then the death will occur six years old. So if your baby is born, then if it is uh, there with the, the syndrome, uh, Zellweger syndrome, that will withstand before, I mean, up to maybe six years long. And after that, that, that particular child will pass away as we die. So because the syndrome is so severe, peroxisome deficiency. Okay. The ketone bodies are formed from acetyl coenzyme A in another way. We can, we can also study if the fatty acids are not fatty acids, fatty acids degraded to acetyl CoA, okay. So if the acetyl CoA is not being used by TCS cycle, what will happen? If it is not using TCS cycle, the excess of acetyl <coughs> coenzyme A <coughs> transferred, okay, that is being transferred and being converted to aceto acetyl coenzyme A or acetoacetate, acetoacetate, and the acetoacetate, and then the final step is the beta hydroxy butyrate, okay, beta hydroxy butyrate, and the beta hydroxy butyrate, another one is the, you can also get acetone formation, so all of them form as a ketone bodies ketone bodies. So if you are hungry or if you are not eating enough, uh, you know, for a, for a while, probably, uh, you know, maybe uh, 18 hours or 24 hours or fasting, you get more of ketone bodies in your blood because all the acetyl CoA is not producing more. More of fatty acid is being, you know, uh, glucagon is being activated, epinephrine is activated, more of cellular, cellular uh, you know, more of cellular uh, 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 activation of the fatty acids is mobilized from adipose cells, more of fatty acids has been oxidized, more excess of acetone, uh, excess of beta hydroxybutyrate, and the excess of the ketone bodies, and that will, will help for brain as a fuel when you are hungry, or, or sorry, when you are fasting for several weeks, ketone bodies there, or in diabetes condition, in diabetics, there is no insulin, so they cannot uh, take of glucose. At that time, the body cells will adapt to use the ketone bodies as the fuel for producing of this energy there. So the high levels of uh, ketone bodies are present in untreated diabetes. Okay, Untreated diabetes. Untreated diabetes, you have a high levels of ketone bodies. So, if you have this uh, severe diabetes, if, I don't know if you ever, ever experienced on that, the untreated diabetes or the diabetes on the uh, chronic disease, uh, or that particular person, even the breath looks like acetone bodies, ketone, acetone. The breath looks, smells like acetone there, okay. Uh, also, the brain adapts the ketone bodies to, to use as the fuel, okay, to produce more of energy. And um, in prolonged starvation, in other words, you know, the, if you starve for two days or in more than two days or three days, the 75% of fuels for the brain, okay, that is from the ketone bodies, fuel of brain, brain tissue, ketone bodies. So that by the people, I, I, I remember that, you know, some other guy who been caught up in avalanche and, and uh, you know, enough, uh, you know, uh, more of snow and he used to take only the snow for a while and then he was in a little uh, shadow, I mean, hideout in a, I think in a cave or something like that and then finally 
he's been recovered, but he was living for up to 40 days. Remember that excess of that time when he was living there? That's why the ketone bodies, that's what withstand the brain and other tissues. So more of the alive on that part. Okay. Do you have uh, any questions? Up to this, I can stop for this lecture today. And then this, the, the next part is the fatty acid synthesis. So that is a little bit I will go through next week, I mean, after your exam. Fatty acid synthesis next week. So I break down this uh, uh, lecture into two parts. Fatty acid breakdown today, and then you have an exam, and then you have a fatty acid synthesis the following week of the exam. So do you have any questions so far? Do you have any questions so far? Do you follow? Dr. Soma. Yes, go ahead. Yes, uh, do we have 